this is what he is. This yes. is where he films everything. All right. Yeah. Uh, behind the scenes looker. One of the late cell, great hotel. So yeah. sort of summer slam. But wait a minute, what the hell is going on here? Charles I, I was just looking for the bathroom. I, I was I was trying to be in the video. <laughs> Alrighty then, I guess since you're here, we can go ahead and record. What's up, people? I am Jay. And as you can see, this is my PWTR co-host Charlie. Say what's up to the people. What's up to the people? <laughs> and you may recognize this voice if you are a vintage listener <laughs> of PWTR. This is one of the original co-hosts of Pro Wrestling Talk Radio, Matthew. Hey guys, how's it going? Long time no uh, see or talk. He got the man size at Hooters. <laughs> I did. I got the man size beer at Hooters. Yes. None of that girly stuff. Man size. Man, I like the man size. <laughs> Alrighty, guys, we are in LA for the purpose of seeing SummerSlam, and today is Saturday. The show is, of course, tomorrow on Sunday. But what we're going to do right now is talk about some of the build up going into SummerSlam. This is basically our addendum to our SummerSlam preview, and we're going to sprinkle in some stuff because there are like some big events happening around town concerning WWE. We attended one of those today and we're going to discuss that just a little bit, but we're going to get started talking about the SummerSlam card. First up, we have Cesaro versus Rob Van Dam. This is going to be a pre-show match that WWE actually put more time into creating the damn picture with Cesaro and Rob Van Dam than they did building the match. So, you guys have any thoughts on that? I know it's going to be a good contest. These are two uh, rough rumble and tumble guys, and I'm going to be excited to see it, but that's pretty much all that I have to say. Yeah, it's just kind of a fun match. If it were on the real show, I don't know if I'd be too excited for it, but just kind of as you're showing up, getting settled, taking your pictures of the stage, you know, it'll be fun to watch, so... I'm fine with it. Uh, I get to see Rob Van Dam, which is cool. I think he will lose this match to Cesaro, although Cesaro's been on quite a losing streak. I wonder if they'll go with the fans being happy. I think they've actually possibly announced these two guys as Lumberjacks for the match with Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, so we'll see how that turns out. If they Hopefully they don't try to run some stupid angle with the Lumberjacks <laughs> having a feud, which would be really annoying. But I think Cesaro's going to pick up the win. Well, I'm hoping Cesaro picks up the win. Nothing against RVD. I, uh, but I think Cesaro needs to win a little bit. He's kind of in a slump. And I'm a big fan of his wrestling style. And these are two wrestlers, even though Rob Van Dam's kind of up there now in age, they're going to put on a good match, I think. It's like watching a SmackDown episode. Like, hey, look, two wrestlers, no build. We're just going to watch them do their thing for a little while. <laughs> yeah, I'm always excited to see live wrestling, and I think that we're going to get some good stuff out of RVD and Cesaro. Uh, Cesaro for the win. Like Matt said, he's in a bit of a slump, and I think he needs something to pick him up out of that. Now we are going to talk about, speaking of a slump, Bray Wyatt versus Chris Jericho. When you say those two names, you just imagine all of the possibilities and you just look at the limitless potential that a feud between those two guys have, the, the caliber of talent that you have featured in that feud. But I don't believe that WWE has tapped into any of it. We got a little bit of a glimpse of it on this last episode of Monday Night Raw with that sit-down one-on-one segment between those two guys. But besides that, there hasn't been much dynamic, no dynamic moments between these two guys. And out of everything that I've seen from Chris Jericho and Bray Wyatt, you would kind of expect them to do that. So it's like layers to this match on one side it's not that interesting and on the other side you expect it to be interesting but it's under your expectation so charlie yeah i'm not looking forward to this match at all. i've actually been told the best build up in the feud came on bray wyatt's appearance on talk is jericho which debuted this week which i have not yet listened to uh that's good you know we're interviewing each other as we're going into a match and promoting a few that's a plus stuff right there i'm not excited for the match i hope they keep it short 10 minutes Bray Wyatt gets the win and, um, yeah, continues his I don't give a fuck streak. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I would want Bray Wyatt to win, too. You know, nothing against Chris Jericho, but he's just kind of a wrestler at this point in his career who comes in for three months, comes in for six months, or maybe a year at the most, and then he's gone. I'd rather have Bray Wyatt, someone who, despite maybe they haven't built his feud correctly, Bray Wyatt really does have a future in the WWE if they use him correctly. And uh, he is fun, to, like especially when he cuts promos or, you know... His in-ring skill is not bad either. And Chris Jericho, if there's any deficiencies on Bray Wyatt's side, should be able to pick up the slack. Um, but I'm with you. No more than 10 minutes. No one's really interested in this match. 
And uh, but it, it should be decent, a good opener. It, you know, it's, I can understand why it's on the card and where it's placed on the card. Yeah, the problem is we should be interested in the match. <laughs> That's the problem. But I'm gonna go with Bray Wyatt for the win here. Kind of like an even Steven type thing. We'll see where it gets them from this point. And I'm hoping that should I said this after. The last show, I'm hoping that they step it up. They've yet to do that, but hey, it, it at the end of the day, it's still Bray Wyatt and Chris Jericho. I know you guys are capable of a whole hell of a lot more than what we're getting from you, and I'm hoping that you get that backing from creative and that freedom to go out there and do it. How hilarious would it be if Chris Jericho won? <laughs> <laughs> that would not be hilarious. That would be uh, yeah, was, disappointing. Yeah, See, hilarious is the word I would use. Yeah, See, no. That's what I did last month when Chris Jericho won. I just like stopped and I just burst out laughing. Like, are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? Like, <laughs> Alrighty now. Jack Swagger versus Rusev in a flag match. This is a match that I'm not really interested in. I was interested in Rusev at one point, but I think that them just continuing with this feud it's dampened my interest in his character but what do you say charlie yeah this feud's kind of lost some steam they really had it at the top last month and they kind of panicked and didn't give us a decisive ending and didn't really know where to go and now we're at a flag match which we'll see how this turns out i think jack swagger is actually going to win because i think a flag match offers the perfect opportunity for WWE to bullshit people. Like, he lost, but hey, he's never been pinned. He's never submitted. You know, you just grab the flag, and that's the end of things. So, I think Jack Swagger will go over because they'll have the ability to do the stuff they used to do at Battle Royals, where, oh, that one didn't count. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, I actually didn't even think about that, that that's why they would use the flag match kind of thing. I thought it had more to do with, you know, they just love building up, you know, Jack Swagger's patriotism. So... On the one hand, if that is their kind of their stop process, then I have to give Booking a little bit of credit with that, and it's a good way to still make sure that Jack Swagger doesn't lose complete face, but that Rusev keeps his undefeated or never pinned uh, streak on. Um, I, I guess Jack Swagger is going to win. I, you know, I honestly would really like to see Rusev win. I'm gonna just for the sake of novelty, I'm gonna say Rusev wins this match. Just because it would put Rusev in a whole different level if he beats Jack Swagger kind of on this more his turf kind of thing. So I'm going to go with Rusev. Yeah, I think that would kind of be cool for Rusev too because I think most people are going into this match expecting for Jack Swagger to win. And I don't think that that's going to do much for Jack Swagger because how much can you run on this whole patriotism thing outside of Rusev? That's not going to work in a regular feud. And we know what Jack Swagger amounts to when he's regular old jack swagger patriot jack swagger great regular jack swagger <laughs> he's like no. captain america he's like steve rogers and he's like all tiny and scrawny <laughs> and they're like he's like no one cares about this guy and he's like well you the second america he's just like put him and he comes out all jack like yes i'm imported now yeah so if rusev was to win this i think it would be shocking and it could possibly make something noteworthy see at least rusev winning would actually come off as something like useful because even if swagger wins i don't think it'll be any sort of moment like it would have been had he you know pinned or made rusev submit like the, the the scenario i had in my head was he would make rusev submit and that thing that they always explode the russian flag out of they would have rigged it with the american flag so when swagger won it just boom american flag and everybody would have gone nuts but with this a flag match it you know, it doesn't really... It's it's not decisive enough for fans to really get behind Swagger winning, and it's so I don't know why you would really use that to make Swagger look good. Speaking of looking good, I think this is a nice transition here. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we had long discussions about this last night, but um, <laughs> AJ Lee and Paige for the Divas Championship, who do you think is going to walk away with the title, and I'm not talking about the title of Mrs. Robinson. I'm ta talking about the Divas Championship. Well, when it comes to when it comes to Mrs. Robinson, AJ Lee always wins. <laughs> Any woman who becomes Mrs. Robinson wins. <laughs> I'm not very clear on that one. Uh, no, but I, um, you know, I think for the they could play kind of hot potato with this title. The Divas title is one of the few titles you can play hot potato with. So I actually kind of see Paige winning this match. For some reason, I just see that happening because it could really extend the feud and bring in some... It makes them both evenly matched when it comes down to it. Now, they can have AJ Lee win and still continue that storyline, but I, for some reason, I just feel like Paige is going to win tomorrow. 
Um, I don't know why. I guess I also think because, and we'll talk about this more, I don't think there's going to be a lot of title changes. So that's also why I think that might be where something happens. I'm actually going to agree. I think Paige is going to win just from the standpoint of, I think they're going to run this feud a little bit along the lines of what Cena and Orton was at the end of 20, or 2009. Because I think they don't have anywhere to go in the Divas division, and the only thing they can do is continuously change the title in order to continue the feud, which is kind of the same thing as they did with Orton and Cena. So I actually see Paige winning this so that they can give an excuse for the feud to continue and try to drag out what they're doing with the Divas division as long yeah. as possible. Yeah. yeah, I believe I picked AJ to win on the PWTR preview for... SummerSlam, but I may have to change that listening to you guys here because with Paige winning the championship, that would change the dynamic of the feud and that would give them another reason to have another match between Paige and AJ. But if AJ was to win, I don't really see where they could go from that point and how they could change things up to warrant them continuing on with this feud. And if they don't want to continue on with the feud, you do have to ask the question, what the hell else is there in the Divas division <laughs> right. that they can latch on to and you know, take from one point to the next. Uh, not much. So. Naomi, Naomi comes up. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see that, though. I do find it funny that we are talking about how the Diva title means so little that they can actually ca ca capitalize off that to make something that means something. That's very... I mean, I think AJ Lee is more popular than the Diva's title itself. Um, I mean, I think she's someone... She's kind of like that... Uh, that Trish Stratus, that China, that Lita kind of character, who's like, yeah, they're they're the champion, but they're she's gonna be popular no matter what if she's champion or not. So Paige, on the other hand, is still kind of in a crucial point where she needs to build legitimacy, and so that's kind of why. And I like Paige. I'm not I'm not ripping on her. I like AJ Lee a little bit more, but I I think Paige has some potential here. Righty, continuing on with the Divas, Brie Bella versus Stephanie McMahon. I think you guys know how big of a fan I am of Stephanie and the fact that I'm going to be live in attendance to see <laughs> Stephanie in her return match when her last match in WWE was on my birthday. I quit match with her father and she she didn't quit. It, it was all Linda's fault. It was all her fault. She threw in the towel for Stephanie, but yeah, that was the, Stephanie's last match. That mm. was over 10 years ago. Did you cry? A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, I did. I'm, I'm over it now. And then the tears of joy like the next weekend when she married Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> but we have Stephanie versus Brie Bella at SummerSlam. Believe it or not, as talented as AJ Lee and Paige are, this is the most anticipated Divas match on this show. And judging by these non-scientific polls that I've been seeing on these different wrestling news websites, this is one of the top anticipated matches at SummerSlam, male or female. So, are you guys anticipating this match? Definitely. I think this will be fun. I think they can turn this into a good segment. I don't know if they'll actually pull out, like, a 10-minute, you know, like, straight-up match, but I think they'll find a way to put this into an entertaining setting, which is all you really needed here. You don't necessarily need them to go out and put on a five-star match. You just need to kind of make this an entertaining spot of the show, which I think they could do. I ultimately think Stephanie's actually going to win this because... I could see them maybe turning Nikki, but at the same time, you look at it and you say, who would actually benefit? And the character of Stephanie McMahon has far more use than that of Brie Bella. The, the, the Brie Bella in the Divas division has a ceiling like that's a house only a mouse could live in. That's how short the ceiling is, like, you know, down <laughs> here. So, th that... Well, you want to give Stephanie the win so you can continue her being a complete and utter bitch as an authority figure, which is an absolute great character. So I actually see Stephanie winning this match. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this match, too, more so than AJ Lee and Paige. Uh, no offense to that match. Um, but I, I just think because I want to see Stephanie McMahon wrestle again. I, and I don't, I'm, I'm with uh, Charlie. I don't think it's going to be one of those things where it's a long, drawn-out match. I think it's going to be very quick. I think it's going to be a transitional match just to make sure everything's ready for the big match that comes after it. I think it's going to be more segment and promo than it is going to be actual fighting. And, uh, and Seven Big Man is great on the mic, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, Brie Bella has potential. I like her more than Nikki, but that's only because Brie got breast implants. So No, Nikki is Nikki, the one. Nikki's one. the one that's, that... Oh, damn it. Brie's the one that doesn't have them. <laughs> Brie's the one. <laughs> I take it back. Sorry. <laughs> I, knew, I knew it was like, wait, I always get it mixed up. 
<laughs> if I see them side by side, I'm like, no. I'm like, oh, she has bigger breasts. That's the one I like more. <laughs> um, notice that's, how, that's no, how I agree. Notice how they can't do the twin magic switcheroo thing anymore? Yeah, because I'd be like, any du- well, maybe anybody would know. Like, hmm, that's clearly the one with Charles breasts. Robinson is like, whoa, I just got aroused. That's totally not the one. <laughs> 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 you know, um, uh, I really, yeah, I wish it was Nikki versus Stephanie Command, because then I could just, then they could, like, I don't know, wrestle and, like, Mud or something, <laughs> but uh, wow, they did that. Just, that makes you sound. I know. I, mean, I want to see it again. I have it on my YouTube favorites actually. Until <laughs> they, they took it down. <laughs> anyway, it tells me way too much about my stuff. But I um no I I, I want Stephanie McMahon to win. I don't think Brie, like you said, doesn't have a lot of ceiling space at least outside of the Divas Division. Um, even in it. <laughs> even in it, I mean, she's she's got a the divas long... division itself just has no fucking right. Well, I mean, even but she's she. I, I would rather see Stephanie McMahon win. She's coming back into the ring. I'd be shocked, shocked if out of all the matches on this card, that is the only one that I would be shocked at if uh, Bella beat uh, McMahon. That's the only one I'd be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, it's some situations where you get people who come back to the ring, like Triple H, for example. Triple H versus Danny Bryan at WrestleMania. There was a cause to say that Triple H should lose this match because it would do this for Danny Bryan. And they could, he could take that momentum and carry it forward. And we saw him do exactly that. On the case of Stephanie McMahon and Brie Bella, that doesn't really exist here. Brie Bella, I like her on Total Divas and all, but as far as her in WWE as a diva... Not much for her to do, and you're talking about ceilings and things. I, 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 you can't get any higher than being in a match with Stephanie McMahon. Like right. you, you can't. And speaking of those highs and things like that, Stephanie has been knocking it out of the park. She's been having some of the most entertaining performances on Monday Night Raw. Her and Paul Heyman are near the top of the freaking list, and I will put John Cena up there too. And we'll get to that a little later. But yeah, I'm gonna go with Stephanie for the win here, and I'll agree with my co-host here. This is going to be more of a segment instead of a match, and I'm perfectly fine with that. Perfectly if I could just stop for a second, this little like line of this door space here it makes it look like I'm edited in, and I don't like. It. I'm not. I'm actually. Put your arms. See, through. I'm actually here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can talk to him. <laughs> Alrighty, what do we have next? Okay. The Miz versus Dolph Ziggler for the Intercontinental Championship. I'm a fan of both of these guys. I. <laughs> yeah, so do you guys see walking away with the Intercontinental Championship in this match? Well, seeing as Dolph Ziggler is over and they've kind of built to him kind of getting this moment back on The Miz after Battleground, we thought he won the match, and then The Miz came back into the ring to kind of ruin everybody's dreams. Seeing as you built to this a- amazing moment of Dolph Ziggler winning, they're getting... It's only logical that they give the giant fuck you and have the Miz win. So that's what I think is going to happen. <laughs> um, this will probably open the card. It'll probably be pretty good. The crowd will be behind Dolph Ziggler. And Miz is going to win, and we'll see if that actually finally gets the Miz a reaction on this return. So we'll see. He's definitely going to get a reaction. I can say that. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. I'll be there. Does no reaction count as a reaction? No. Okay. It's just sad. <laughs> um, I, I think, uh, I actually think. Um, Dolph Ziggler is gonna win. Uh, well, no, I'm sorry. I don't actually think Dolph Ziggler is gonna win. I think I want Dolph Ziggler to win, but the Miz is going to win, um, just because uh, I think they're gonna make Dolph Ziggler really struggle for it. Like he, he's just gonna be on struggle bus for the rest of 2014. He might get eventually the big win on Miz, but I don't. I I just don't think they're gonna have the Miz lose the title that much. He get he generates so much heat being intercontinental champion that having Dolph Ziggler win it is like why I mean like we we watched uh, uh, Roman Reigns punch Miz it was a punch he just punched Miz once and everyone thought it was the greatest thing <laughs> like imagine seeing like the Miz get a beat up in like a hardcore match or like an I quit match like I want to see that because people are going to go like crazy um, that's true like the Miz has intercon- like the intercontinental title gives the Miz a reason to go out there and try to interact with main eventers and then give the crowd the reaction when they whoop his ass right <laughs> uh, and Dolph Ziggler I, don't, I just think WWE just is kind of cold on Dolph Ziggler you know I, even though they shouldn't be I, th- I think they always I mean remember how long it took Dolph Ziggler to get the title off of Rey Mysterio 
Like, you remember that? Like, that was just, like, uh, he didn't. I don't even think he no, did. No, yeah, he did, but it's like... He, he, Ray Mysterio got suspended, and then they gave it to John Morrison. Oh, that's... Oh, shoot. Wow. You're right. I remember it's really wanting... I remember everyone wanted to, and everyone kept feeling like, it's only a matter of time, right? Dolph Ziggler's going to win the title. And he never did. And that's when Dolph Ziggler was in a much better standing with the WWE than he is Yeah, now. and then Ray got suspended, and everyone went, all right, he's going to win the title. And then right. it was like, yeah, here's John Morrison. And it was like... Oh. Great choice. <laughs> See, I think the thing is, though, um, Dolph Ziggler may have been in better standing with WWE back then, but the fans aren't as crazy. Well, they weren't as crazy about Dolph Ziggler then as they are now. Because I remember he was in that partnership with Vicky Guerrero, and when she would get on the mic, you know the nuclear heat she would get. And I used to always say, if you want the crowd to be quiet, just hand the mic to Dolph Ziggler. Because nobody gave a damn about Dolph Ziggler back then. And it's kind of sad, though. Because like you said, when he was in a better standing with WWE, if he had the crowd response that he's getting right now, back then, who the hell would have known what would have happened with Dolph Ziggler with all of those years then and where he would be in the company right now? So that that's unfortunate. I guess it's one of those situations where people have to see you being screwed over yeah. before they want to support you. It's like sometimes... Just having talent isn't good enough. Like they, they need to see the company screwing you over before they take a second look at you and say, "Man, maybe I should be a fan of this guy. Maybe I should like this guy. I want him to go somewhere." So that's kind of unfortunate, though. But what I think is going to happen in this, we're going to have a damn good match here. Mm -hmm. I am fairly certain that we're going to have a damn good match. I talked about that match that they had a few weeks ago on Raw. I can only imagine they're going to step it up on the big stage of SummerSlam, one of the biggest shows of the year, with. The Miz walking away with the championship. I heard Dolph Ziggler up to his, uh, his his back program, going into this feud with the Miz. So, get it? It's a carry the Miz joke. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. Anyway, he's gonna be in uh, the Marine Four. Show some respect. <laughs> and he's gonna get outshowed by Summer Rae. Well, that's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> Next up. Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns. As you can see, Speaking I'm representing here with... No, you're not. Yes, I am. You are He's... not. <laughs> this is Roman Reigns right here. Right there. Top dog. Can't leave uh, the memories alone. Well, no, that would be Dean Ambrose. No, <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, he has the Roman Reigns shirt on right now. We actually met Roman Reigns today. We'll talk about that a little later on in the video. <laughs> but, um, yeah... What's going to happen? Like, are you going to be that happy tomorrow? Oh, no. I'm watching this match dialed in. Just, please be good. 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 Mm. Like, just just make sure Charlie doesn't have, like, any, like, lotion on his hand. He's really close. <laughs> <laughs> it's about to get good. <laughs> so, yeah. What are your thoughts about Roman Reigns versus Randy Orton? I think this is going to be... I don't think it'll be a bad match. I'm fairly confident of that. But I don't think just serviceable is going to be good enough in this case this is a huge match the thing i worry about is that i don't know if he's going to be able to go all in like i don't know if they're fully to the point where they're just going to say like fuck it this is like time like let's do everything we can to make this the best match on the card i don't know if that's necessarily the mindset there like for instance i hope you know roman reigns is saying this is the most important match I've had in the company thus far, and Randy Orton saying, I gotta play a huge role in this match to make this guy look good because he's important to the future. And let's go out there and go all out and make this great. I hope that's the mindset of the two guys. If it is, I think we'll get some good stuff here. I think Roman Reigns is gonna get the win. Although if the match sucks, don't be surprised if Randy Orton ends up winning. Because I don't know, I would I wouldn't be shocked if they call into the referees a little year there and say, you know what, change change it. We gotta rethink our strategy here. Uh, I, I think Roman Reigns is going to win. I think he is someone who's at a uh, kind of an apex with the fans. This guy is beyond... Him and Dean Ambrose are so popular on Tumblr women. One of the uh, demographics WWE is really trying to tap into recently. And he's he's good on the mic. At least serviceable on the mic. He makes moments. That's that's key. He's maybe not the best in the, on the mic, but he creates moments. And he he helps the give a fuck a meter. Right. Like, and it, it maybe it's maybe it's also that he's usually put on put with people who are also good on the mic. But I think um, he makes things special. I mean, we watched Seth Rollins a little while ago doing his little promo and with Dean Ambrose, and it's just night and day between the two. Like, who I care about uh, a little bit more. 
Uh, I know not everyone agrees with me on that. See, totally watch out. <laughs> I gotta tell you about these Seth Rollins. People. Oh, they're like, oh, at the beginning of the video, glad to see you back, Matt. No, no, they're like, fuck yeah. <laughs> like, look, I don't hate Seth Rollins. I just think at this point in the career, Roman Reigns should be holding the money in the bank. Not Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is intercontinental right now. One day, maybe. I know, I'm going to get so much hate on my Twitter. <laughs> At Radio Final Cut. If you guys want to hit me up and spread some hate, I understand. But trust no, they'll me. Send, they'll send it to Jay. I can't believe you hate <laughs> <Yeah>. Seth Rollins. <laughs> I, I, anytime somebody says something on this show, it's all, it always comes back to me. Like, they'll send me the tweet. <laughs> Don't do it. Radio, At Radio Final Cut, bring the haters on. It's totally fine. Um, I'm just saying, Seth Rollins is not as cool as Roman Reigns. Yeah. And Roman Reigns is probably going to win. And I think Randy Orton's... I, I, I think Randy Orton's going to put on a good show. Charlie, I actually d- disagree with something that you said with the mindset of these two guys going into this match. I want Randy Orton's mindset to be, I am a top star. Look at your friggin' self. Don't even have to worry about the future and what's to come with... Roman Reigns, just look at yourself and acknowledge you to be the top star that you are. I always say this line, when Randy Orton is at his best, he is the best. And I hope that's the mindset that he has going into this match, that he's the best in the world. And if we get him with that mindset, Roman Reigns, he's going to have to bring something to the table that he's never brought before. Because this is his first singles match on a pay-per-view, and this is going to be a very big test for him. I'm just hoping that it turns out well. Because if people, like, I I don't even want to say people. I'm talking about me. I'm a huge fan of Roman Reigns. I want Roman Reigns to be a top star in WWE. Are you kidding? Why am I not wearing my Roman Reigns shirt now? Because you're wearing that on Sunday. Okay, bam. So I'm not lying. See, I'm 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 the one wearing the Roman Reigns shirt we don't at SummerSlam. Twins. So yeah, that that's part of it too. But <laughs> yeah, um, I'm I'm a huge fan of Roman See, Reigns. I want him to be. I didn't want to insult him when I met him by wearing some by acknowledging Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. So you know. We'll get there. I, I wasn't acknowledging Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. I have a story for you guys. We'll we'll talk about that a little later. And for the record, I wished him luck. So and he said <laughs> thank you. So in the event that this match is good, it was all me. It was all you. But yeah, I want Roman Reigns to be a, a big star in WWE. But I want him to perform at a level of a big star. So I'm not gonna sit here and make excuses. I'm not gonna pass oh the buck. To anyone else, I'm going to look at Roman Reigns and say, I want you to be a big star, perform like a big star. Because as far as I'm concerned, like, what would it be about him that, like, I want him to be a big star if he doesn't have the talent to back it up? Like, it, his damn hair or something? Like, I know. See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> See, we already bought the t-shirts. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, it's nothing about him that, that's like, oh, I want you to be a big star if you don't have the talent to back it up. So I, I have confidence in him, and I'm hoping that he, like I said, he pulls something out that he's never um, brought to the table before. He enters through the crowd. No one never does that. So that's Sa- it? Except that, the that, Sandman. That, that's why he should. <laughs> now you guys see the difference between a fan and a mark. <laughs> fan, mark. Fan, mark. <laughs> what do we have next? So we, we, we've mentioned this guy's name so much. Seth Rollins. He actually has a match. <laughs> I'd say boo, but I mean, I, I, he doesn't get that much of a reaction. Oh. Yes, he does. He's, he gets cold. He's like right below Triple H and Stephanie. He's in heat. He, he's right below Roman Reigns in crowd reaction. <laughs> he's right below like Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, Paul Heyman, Brock Lesnar. Stephanie, Triple H. I appreciate it on SmackDown. He called Dean Ambrose the one who's been to the unstable when he literally has his insanity coming out of his hair and like a blonde streak. Like, I was like, ah. I get right. so much hate. I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, yes, we will see Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins at SummerSlam. This is what I consider the most bitter rivalry in WWE, the most personal and bitter rivalry in WWE. Who do you guys have winning in this one? See, this is the part of the show where we, we figure out we get hate for not not loving Seth Rollins, even though we acknowledge that this is going to be a good match and that this is a good feud. Like, you see, for instance, let me give an example. This is the feud of the year. What do I get on here? 
How the fuck do you not like Seth Rollins? That, that, that's what the... <laughs> Yeah, like feud of the year. You, know, like, right, you said you didn't like. You you said he wasn't a world champion, so that means you think he's a jobber. You're not fat. Man, I really hate the Patriots, but Tom Brady, man, he could he probably could take them all the way. <laughs> man, what do you even hate the Patriots? <laughs> but anyway, this is gonna be a really good match. I think the lumberjack stipulation is beyond stupid, but I hope they can kind of just keep it in the ring, let the guys go. They're not gonna let them go all the way because that sounds awful. But they're not gonna let them go all out to make this the best match. It was almost like the WWE said, you know what, that is not going to steal the show, yeah. and gave them this stipulation. I hope this doesn't turn too cookie-cutter, because that's the one thing I haven't liked about Seth Rollins' character, is he's very, he's very just average. He's your, your normal heel. He just does all like the normal heel things. He doesn't have any real personality about him. And this is the type of match that just drives that home. Like, he just throws face out of ring, face gets surrounded by heels, then he tries to run, gets thrown in by all the jobber faces, and this... It's just awful. I hope Seth Rollins wins this match fairly decisively with no help from the Lumberjacks so we can kind of continue this feud in the right direction with Seth Rollins with his win and Dean Ambrose still going out of his way to make Seth Rollins' life a living hell. Um, I think I think Seth Rollins is going to win. I think um, he's someone who, while he does have support from a lot of the fans who are going to be angry at me, I still think he hasn't won over a good deal of the internet wrestling community, uh, myself included, and they're, they're going to try to do something where it can happen. Plus, watching Dean Ambrose lose is fairly entertaining, and I like Dean Ambrose. I, I like him a lot. I, I'm just saying it's going to be more fun. It'll be more fun watching Dean Ambrose struggle to get back at Seth Rollins than Seth Rollins like, oh, you know, well, I'm just losing all the time, and I have, like... Next to a world title, probably the most important thing you can have. Um, and so I, I, I think uh, that Seth Rollins is going to win. I think he actually might surprise us in this match. Even though it's a Lumberjack match, I actually think we might see some really nice moves and spots from Seth Rollins. And I think the Lumberjack, as you said, with the cookie cutter, face gets thrown out, heel gets thrown out, back in. That gives him time to kind of break up the match and not put it all on their performance. Uh, so he can kind of do some bigger moves without it having to be, without there having to be too much ring psychology, which Seth Rollins does not have a lot of. <laughs> yeah, see, so you see, you say the thing about not relying too much on their performance. I say, hell, go for it. That's what I want to see. That's what I wanted this match to be. <laughs> and Charlie, you bring up a very good point when you talk about um, basically how formulaic a lumberjack matches are, and I'm hoping WWE breaks that formula on Sunday because. This isn't just a run-of-the-mill feud. Like I said, it's the most personal feud in WWE. You have a lot to play off of there, and I want these guys to be the story. Of course, you're going to have to deviate from that path a little bit because you put yourself in this situation with the Lumberjack stipulation, but I'm hoping that we get some good stuff out of Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose, some, some stuff that is unique and special to what they have in their rivalry. Mm. And if we go that route, then I think we're going to be in for a good show. And I'm actually going to disagree with you, Matt. I think it would be interesting to see Seth Rollins struggle because I think with him having that Money in the Bank briefcase, him being torn in two different directions where it's like, damn, I keep getting my ass kicked by this guy over here, but I'm trying to move over here. He won't allow me to do that. I think that would be an interesting dynamic in a row for Mm. WWE to take after SummerSlam, so I'm going to go with Dean Ambrose for the win. In the last match that we're going to be discussing today, the main event of SummerSlam, this will be Brock Lesnar versus John Cena with the WWE World Heavyweight Championship on the line. Charlie, you weren't on the last episode of PWTR, but you've been saying for weeks that (laughs) with people thinking that Brock Lesnar was a sure bet to win this match that we may need to reconsider. So what do you say now? I'm going to go for John Cena to win this match. And I think it'll be a great match. I think it'll almost be exactly what the last match was, which was a perfect match with a dumb finish. And that's probably what we're going to get here. I I just don't necessarily see that. I see them finding some way to maybe extend this. I know Brock is working Night of Champions, so I was kind of like afraid... That we're almost going to get some kind of bullshit 
DQ or some kind of weird finish that allows him to kind of say, we can extend this match out one more month, and that gives us one less month of trying to book Brock as champion, which is not something I want them to do. But at the end of the day, I think Cena's going to win. I don't think Rollins will cash in. Although, I think they could run again if they really wanted Rollins to cash in. You could run a decent story where Brock just beats the living shit out of Cena and like gets DQ'd and kicks his ass and everyone goes, what the fuck? And then that's the whole plan for Rollins to come out. If that's the plan, they can kind of do something there, but I would love to see Brock win. I just don't see it. Oh, please, don't let that be the plan. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. No, no. And it's, it's like Seth Rollins, he could be a world champion one day. I totally believe that. But that would be a terrible way. And didn't what were we talking about just last night? Um, that the fact that they just did that at last SummerSlam, they had someone cash in the money in the bank. Mm-hmm. Um, I you know it's I didn't even really re- realize that that was at SummerSlam. But uh, do it two years in a row. I mean, the money in the bank, that gimmick. In order for it to survive, you have to have years where everyone does something very predictable with it. But you also have to have years where everyone does something really unpredictable. And right now with Rollins. A kind of blank slate wrestler they need to make it very interesting what he does with it because if he doesn't do anything very interesting with it it makes his character boring and his character is kind of already teetering on that brink in my opinion um anyway when it comes to the match i think brock lesnar and john cena are going to do a good job i am nervous about the finish as well because i can definitely see the wwe stretching us out longer because it's john cena and brock lesnar the guy beat undertaker and then john cena their boy and it's going to Night of Champions, and they want Night of Champions to be... SummerSlam is always going to sell, no matter what. Night of Champions, maybe not so much. So I could definitely see this going either way and not be surprised. Um, but I actually am going to go with John Cena. I think John Cena is going to win this because as much as the WWE likes building up Brock Lesnar, they like building up Cena more. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. He beat The Undertaker, but John Cena just can't be stopped. So... No matter which way this match goes, I think it's going to be um, a very shocking moment to me because I honestly, I, I cannot say for certain who is going to win. I can tell you who I want to win. I want Brock Lesnar to win, and that's my official prediction for the match, but I cannot try to... De- try to deduce the winner with logic or anything like that like i i simply cannot do it i think that this match has been built amazingly well it's been great paul Heyman, he's been amazing on the mic and he's been so amazing that he's put me in a position where i haven't even given john cena the amount of credit that he actually deserves because john cena has been knocking it out of the park i've loved every single thing every single thing that i've seen from john cena in the road to SummerSlam and that promo that he cut on Monday Night Raw where he was talking about how people want to see him turn and that he's going to have to, like I was talking about with Roman Reigns, of course they incorporated this into the storyline, but he's going to have to pull something out of himself that he's never um, displayed before to beat Brock Lesnar and just everything that John Cena is, everything that Brock Lesnar is, it's an, an amazing matchup, great feud, and I'm sure that this is going to be a great match with whatever way that it ends. It's going to be, um, man, I just can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it and be a part of that atmosphere. So you guys have any uh, more thoughts on SummerSlam? Um, I, you know, I, uh, I think it's going to be a good show overall. I, I think even the matches that we're talking about, like, even though they could be disappointing, I think in a general sense, I think they're all going to at least deliver on a basic level. Only match that maybe won't, I think, can't be satisfactory is Jack Swagger versus uh, Rusev. But that's a flag match by definition. It can't be satisfactory. <laughs> uh, unless Rusev wins. Then it, actually, I think I could be satisfied. Um, but, yeah, I, I think this is going to be a good show. I, I'm, I'm predicting that it's going to be at least a 7 out of 10. I really am. I think it's going to be a strong show. I would agree. I think this is going to be a strong show. I like their card because they got like a nice eight match card. And even though I don't really care about Bray Wyatt and Chris Jericho, I can live with it on the card. And every every match I can say, yeah, that's, that, that can be on the card. I don't have any of those matches where I go, why in the fuck is that on the card? So I hope they don't, don't do any bullshit like unannounced matches. I hope we don't get Stardust and Goldust versus Ryback Baxel for the 19th time. I, I hope we don't get some 
Fandango, Damian Sand. Oh, we're getting a Damian Sandow match. No, who do, who's he gonna come out as? Kobe Bryant. <laughs> Kobe, Kobe Bryant would be kind of cool. Actually. So he'll be like a celebrity, a movie director. He'll come out as Matthew Robinson. That's what we're doing. Yeah, Matthew yeah, Robinson will come out. What's up? Hey, everyone. I win the world championship. Just like, what? Yeah. So I hope we stick pretty true to what the card is now. Because their usual stick of three, two or three unannounced matches, I hope we don't see that. Alrighty, and speaking of seeing things, if you're going to be watching SummerSlam on the WWE Network for $9.99, you can actually see, you, great chance you're going to see uh, me and Charlie on the screen. We're going to be somewhere near the left turnbuckle, like that that turnbuckle in the back. Like we're, I, I strategically purchase my tickets anytime I go to a WWE show. I make sure that I'm like somewhere in the frame of the camera so <laughs> yeah <laughs> make sure you are looking out for us and we're gonna move on now to talk about the SummerSlam panel that we attended today this was also the WWE 2k15 roster reveal the panel featured Renee Young she was a co-host uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin he was the other host on the show then you had Cesaro Sheamus Roman Reigns Sting Hulk Hogan and John Cena. Did I miss anybody? I think that was it. Not Seth Rollins. He was getting his that was hair. unnecessary. He was getting his See? hair dyed, guys. He was getting his hair dyed. It's very important. It has to getting look a touch fresh. up on the roots. He's but... in L.A. He knows there's gonna be good some good places here. Uh, you, gotta, you gotta have half. You know, you can't can't have one hair color around here. Yeah. So were there any highlights? Oh, for the panel for you. I know one of the highlights for me was the back and forth between Cesaro and Sheamus. I thought that that was pretty entertaining. Um, Roman Reigns actually said that they were flirting with each other because every every time that they were asked a question, they would always go back and forth with each other. Who do you want your opponent to be? Who do you want your partner to be? Like, damn, like everything was about them. But it, it was kind of fun, though. And they did um, plant that idea in my head when they were talking about who do you want your uh, partner to be if you were to go for the uh, championships like cesaro and sheamus in a tag team that would be fucking awesome like i love them as opponents as partners man limitless possibilities you know we do have to report on the breaking news though there's huge breaking news coming out of this panel sting really wants a match with undertaker yes <laughs> man he want he wants a match with the undertaker Bad. I'm starting to believe he just wants the Undertaker. <laughs> <laughs> it was so crazy because every single answer, it was like Sting. He he wanted to communicate to somebody. Whether if Vince was watching this panel, like I'm sure he gets the message now. Sting wants a match with the Undertaker. Even now, after the streak ended at WrestleMania, he still wants that match. And he's he literally said, "If I have my way." I will compete in the WWE ring, and I will compete against The Undertaker. He also threw out some more names like Shawn Michaels. He talked about from a few years back, though, having a match with Shawn Michaels. But, of course, you know, yeah. he's, he's just coming to WWE now. Not like he had anything to do with that, but I digress. Anyway, he also talked about John Cena and... He didn't say Roman Reigns. S smart man. <laughs> Who else did he mention? It was an, uh, Stone Cold, yeah. Oh, obviously, <laughs> and I, you, you all have probably been seeing Stone Cold and Hulk Hogan go back and forth on these different wrestling news sites about who's the biggest star of all time. They kind of traded some jabs on that too. Talked about how they would kick each other, each other's asses, and so yeah, that was some pretty entertaining stuff. And uh, then uh, Cena said something about wanting to face Austin, and Austin's response was, "Can you sell a stunner?" <laughs> and he didn't respond. And Lord Ooh. knows, because Cena can't sell. Whoa. <laughs> Why was I not See, in the room if, for this? if that was if if I was in John Cena's position, I would be like, I would need to sell a stunner because I, you know, kick your ass. Hey, but that is not the company response. <laughs> <laughs> See, and John Cena, um, yeah, I guess you were kind of annoyed by him because during the panel, there was one moment where they were like, uh, "What matchup would you go for in um, WWE 2K15? Like when you pop the." game out of the case you know plop it in what match would you go for and then stone cold was like yeah um cena you know uh you could do a, a stone cold versus john cena and john cena was like well yeah if, if i had the game i would I, I would do a stone cold versus john cena but i would pick stone cold and whoop my own ass so. <laughs> that's a good answer actually <laughs> that's a good answer yeah he was just annoyed by a lot of the answers john cena he gave came him. out in full merch full full uniform like that, that promo 
promo, man. Uh, John Cena's got to sell. If John Cena puts anything on, it's going to sell. John <laughs> Cena could walk out with like a shirt for uh, Val Venus, and people would be like, I gotta buy a Val Venus. <laughs> <laughs> Just because John Cena works. So maybe Seth Rollins should contact John Cena. I agree. Well, I bought the shirt. Yeah, it, <laughs> that makes two. It's it was, Seth Rollins and him. <laughs> it was on back order though, so I, I don't have it with me right now. But so it, you're it, also one of the two people that own a Miz shirt. It's it's gonna be no. I, I've seen many people with yeah. Miz I actually see quite a few yeah. people with Miz. Shirts. Miz has one of the uh, uh, like all of his shirt designs are awesome. If if yeah. pun intended, yeah. <laughs> if only they weren't for the Miz. Uh. But um yeah my my Seth Rollins mom, shirt I think his mom bought this shirt last time I <laughs> my Seth Rollins shirt is gonna be on my doorstep when I get home. It's kind of weird when you say it like that. I don't know why. It's gonna be way for me when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, someone stole it and then they went home and opened it and said, well, "Let me put this back." <laughs> <laughs> Any more uh, highlights for you uh, from the show? Um, yeah, Stone Cold needs to not allow one more question. <laughs> Because he was like, one more question. We we proceeded to hear the guy's life story, and then he didn't even want to ask a question. Yeah, spe- no more <laughs> questions, especially when it's not a friggin' question. So. Like, he was like, life story, like waiting for some, like, oh, that's cool response from everybody. And everybody was like, you got a fucking question, asshole? <laughs> <laughs> and then I was just like, I bought some celery, and uh, <laughs> I forgot the carrots I was going to buy for the dip, and my wife was upset, and uh, I told her that it was... Uh, <laughs> One thing that I can say uh, about Roman Reigns, though, he has a whole hell of a lot of confidence. Like, he, he seems as if he, he has a persona of uh, being, I can't even say persona, like, he seems as if he's, like, too cool for school. Like, he was sitting up there, and it was like, uh, and, and Stone Cold actually kept commenting on that, too. It was like, you were just too cool, because he was just so laid back, and he was like, I'm not worried about the shit going on down here. This is about Roman Reigns, and I kind of like that confidence a little bit. Some people, I can sense that it is probably rubbing them the wrong way, though, because I've seen some interviews with him, and you can tell that it's just not fans thinking that he's the next big thing. He thinks it, too. And you can you can clearly see that being reflected in some of the things that he says. But speaking of Roman Reigns, we actually got a chance to meet Roman Reigns. We took uh, pictures with Roman Reigns, and what I, I was talking about this shirt earlier... This isn't Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins on here because I, I, I took a picture with Roman Reigns and I said, you know, the, it's official now. We did the Shield pose like I'm a member of the Shield and he didn't deny it. So, see, yeah. I would have been a, <laughs> I, I would have been a member too, but I would only be a member if I got to be Roman Reigns. And Roman Reigns was not going for that. So <laughs> somewhere <laughs> hidden on uh, Charlie's laptop is a thirty thousand. A word epic fan fiction <laughs> about Roman Reigns and him switching bodies for it. <laughs> oh lord! It was great. I turned on my laptop the other day, and it's Roman Reigns in the background. And I hear like from I'm standing over here, and it's over there, and I hear really <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I don't even. I think I have like the default background. Yep. Yeah, you have a default background. Yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> what was your experience with uh, Roman Reigns? I know it only lasted for like a minute, but. It was a great minute. <laughs> That's what a lot of people say when they have a great when they meet the person of their dreams. It was only a minute. It only lasted a minute, but it was great. <laughs> See, it, it was like handshake. You know, hey, how you doing? He called me boss, which was uh, I don't know. I guess I'm a boss. Um, I, I noticed he is not as tall as I thought he was. Only six three. Only six three. Yeah. A pure muscle. <laughs> only six three. <laughs> it was only six three. What was it to do? That's not impressive. <laughs> so I, I was I was a little weird. I was like, man, I'm pretty close this is kind of not what i wanted like i wanted to be like whoa like get like a mythical <laughs> god or something but yeah i wish him luck yeah i hope he does well tomorrow and we did the shield pose then uh yeah and they, they said they like my hair i bet he orders the man size <laughs> he totally orders yeah. the man size <laughs> although it's great he has the perfect voice to do yeah, the yeah he doesn't <laughs> have to put it <laughs> on he, just, he doesn't have to have like a put on he's like, like, like he with the girl's side or the man's side man's side he doesn't have to say man side he's just gonna look at her like She's like, man, man size. size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so I was after Charlie. I go up there. I shake his hand. I'm like, I'm a huge, huge fan. And then I ask him to do the shield pose. And he does it. And he's like, afterwards, he's like, yeah, I had a, a, a big skull. I had a real mean shield-like face. And I was like, thank you. Yeah, and I, I was like, you know, 
I'm the new member of the Shield. It's <laughs> it's official now. With you taking the picture, that means that I'm the new member of the Shield. And like I said, he didn't deny it, so I'm officially a member of the Shield. I was this close when he said I'm a huge fan. I was gonna be like, he likes Raw. He likes Ambrose more. So that <laughs> oh. that doesn't make it untrue. I'm I'm still a huge fan. He's gonna call out your side chick, man. That's, that's <laughs> no, 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 no. It, it, you can only use that for Charlie. See, so you're yeah. a Mark too. No, I'm, me. I am not a Mark. Band Miss, wa- bandwagon over here. I, how am I bandwagon when Ro- Roman Reigns in the WWE hierarchy? He's higher on the totem pole than Dean Ambrose is. Bandwagon, Mark. <laughs> anyway, this has definitely been an entertaining experience. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Matt, for being a part of this video. The and pleasure was all yours. <laughs> and we will catch you guys later. We'll be here for our SummerSlam post-show review. And we may even get some footage for you guys. I don't know. We'll see how everything works we out. We may even like... bring David. <laughs> Card subject to change. Card subject to change. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All righty. Thank you guys for tuning in. Peace out. You're welcome. Testing, testing. Testing. One, two. Idaho, Test. South Dakota, North Dakota, Nebraska, Chicago, Illinois, Ohio, Alabama, Alaska. <laughs> Sweet home, Arkansas. Alabama. Yo, Arkansas is still a state? Oh, I do know <laughs> that. I heard that. I read well, about that somewhere. Bill Clinton is from Arkansas, so. Yeah, it's like they have to be preserved for historical reasons. Yeah, <laughs> just, just for that. <laughs> the diamond state. Are there any diamonds there? <laughs>